Hello everyone, this is Wes from Resurrection Auto. I've got my 2007 Suzuki X, excuse me, SX4 here that uh, has some pretty bad engine noise and some of that at least is related to the timing chain as it's pretty worn out, I think. So nonetheless, this video is going to walk you through exactly how to replace the timing chain on your vehicle if you have a Suzuki. Um, before we get started, I want to let you know that I am a pastor and a Christian, and so I shot this video first and foremost so you could get your car back on the road, but also to share a little bit about my faith. I'll save that to the end of the video. With that said, let's get started with this repair. Okay, first thing I want to do is go ahead and get the car elevated on the front. So we're going to need access to especially the passenger side wheel well um, to get to the bottom of the timing set uh, crank and what whatnot. So uh, go ahead and Chalk the back of the car, gonna jack it up, put it on jack stands, and then we'll go from there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is re remove the negative terminal or connector to the battery here, just for safety precaution. Uh, and then we're gonna support the engine using a jack underneath from the oil pan and a block of wood. And go ahead and remove this a motor mount here connecting uh, to the passenger side firewall. So you can see there's a bolt here. There is, uh, let's see, another bolt. Uh, let's see, uh, here on this bracket. So that's two. There's one there down that, kind of deep down there for the other side of that bracket. And then it attaches to the motor with these two bolts. And on this side, there's a bolt in the front and an acorn nut on the top. And that will go ahead and take this motor mount out and give us lots of working room to see what other peripherals we need to remove to get to the timing chain cover. So let's get that uh, taken care of next. Okay, I'm underneath the passenger side here. I'm gonna remove this uh, serpentine belt. So it's a 14 millimeter there. That is your tensioner pulley. And that will allow you to get enough slack to get the belt off. Make sure you know exactly how this belt goes back on because uh, You'll need to reinstall it, of course, once we get the timing chain replaced. Okay, and here is a uh, quick snapshot of the, the belt layout here on this 2.0. Okay, so we got the uh, engine mount off, so we got better spacing to work here. The next thing we need to do is remove the idler pulley. Uh, actually, the tensioner first would be better, and the idler pulley, I believe. So if you look, I'll try to point these out. The power steering pump is here. Then just to the right of the power steering pump is the idler, or excuse me, is the tensioner. There's a, there's a bolt on the top and the bolt on the bottom. I'll show it to you once I get it off. And then next is the idler there. I think there's just a single nut there I'm gonna remove and get that off. It looks like the um, pulley here can just stay in place. And that's by the way, the water pump and also the AC compressor at the bottom, I believe can stay in place. It looks like it just needs to be those two middle ones that need to come off. So let me get those off and I'll show you some uh, pictures of that and see what we need to do next. Okay, I've got the tensioner off and the idler off. The idler just had this single nut on it. I will tell you that it is very, very tight uh, in here to try to get this off. Um, it is standard right-handed threads so that you know just loosen it to the left but it was just very little room to get the uh, wrench in there I did lower the engine a little bit using the jack to provide myself a little extra space the idler or excuse me the uh, the tensioner pulley I got off but unfortunately let's see if I can get a shot of this unfortunately there's not enough room to drop it out because of the crank pulley. Um, and it's got a pretty big spring package on the back side, which just prevents you from getting this guy down. Uh, so I'm gonna continue to work. The next thing I need to do is deal with the power steering pump. Um, it is just barely over, the pulley is just barely over the uh, timing chain cover. So let me work on that a little bit and let me see if I can come up with a solution there and then I'll shoot some more video. Okay, I was able to get the power steering pump wholly off, as you can see there. I did it by using a flathead screwdriver from the rear to put it through the hole of the pulley. There's two holes in the pulley that I'll show you and then use a 10 millimeter wrench from the front. It was really, really difficult. It took about a half an hour just to get those four bolts off. 
Um, here's what it looks like. And these are the holes I used as pry locations to hold the pulley steel while I remove these bolts. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and remove the uh, bolt here from the crank. I don't have a crank puller. I'll have to go rent one, I guess. Uh, and I don't think this will just slide off, but I'm going to go ahead and get the bolt out um, so that that's ready. And I guess I'll try to see if it'll slot off, although I doubt it. That's going to take an impact wrench. Um, I don't think there's a much better way to do it because you'll have to hold the engine if you use a socket and wrench. I'm just going to use my electric impact wrench, remove that bolt, and then we'll keep on. All right, I got the uh, bolt out with the impact wrench. came out very easily, and I noticed that this pulley just slides right off. So super helpful there. Um, so let me get this out of the way. All right, the next thing I think I'll do is I'm going to spend some time with some degreaser around the oil pan gasket here and up around the timing cover um, so that when I take this off, we don't get a lot of junk down uh, in the oil pan. Um, try to get this as clean as possible. Um, I believe at this point, all of the, all of the uh, timing cover is exposed and can be removed. Now we still have to take off the valve cover gasket. So let me get all this cleaned up and then we'll attack the valve cover, get that off, and we should be getting close to getting this guy out of here. Okay, got this uh, all cleaned up as best I could at least. So we've got a clear shot to the timing chain cover. Um, so the next thing to do is we've got to remove the valve cover. Um, and so to begin that process, we're going to remove these two millimeter uh, bolts. I'm gonna just slide this out. Matter of fact, I can just do it while you're watching. So just get that guy out of the way. Two, uh, two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, and then there's two spring latches back here and here. We just pop those off and this whole assembly will come out along with the air filter and that'll give us access to the top of the motor. So let me get that done and I'll show you what's next. Okay, next up is to remove a few things on the top side to get access to the valve cover. So we're gonna unplug each of the coil pack connectors and then there's an eight millimeter bolt. So we'll take each of those out and remove the coil packs. Um, 10 millimeter bolt here and here. We'll take care of this wiring harness. I'll probably also undo these little clips by just squeezing them together and pulling them out. You got a clamp here and here. So those go back, pull these out. Um, and that should take care of all the peripherals. Also remove the dipstick here as that's in the way. And that'll get us down to the valve cover. Um, so let me take care of those items and then we'll move back uh, into the next step. Okay, so got all the peripherals out of the way. Um, I also failed to mention there's a connector here for, I believe it's the cam position sensor, but you just unplug that. There are six acorn nuts here, 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 and here, and here. You're gonna take those off, and then you're gonna have to pry the um, valve cover off. This thing can be on there really, really tight if it's been on there for a long time. So you're gonna have to work around the edge, don't damage the surfaces but eventually with some patience um, and persistence, you'll get this off um, and we'll show you what's underneath. Okay, and I've got the uh, valve cover off. Quite a bit of sludge down in here. Probably could use an engine flush. Um, actually, yeah, funny, because this car actually runs really good outside of this, the engine noise. And if you want to see the engine noise, I'll show you, it's right. That's the ticking sound you hear as the chain goes around. And that's why and sometimes at certain RPMs, it'll smooth out because uh, the engine gets in a condition where there's no slop here. Um, but there should never be slop here. And so as this thing is idling or at certain RPMs, it's just ticking away. And it's really bad for the engine because eventually it wears out the uh, it, it guide here and you start getting metal shavings on the engine. So that is the problem right there. It is definitely a timing chain issue. And so let me continue to get some other things together. We're gonna, next step is gonna be to take down or take off the timing chain cover. Um, and then we're down to the actual parts that need to be replaced. So let's uh, get some things in uh, order and I'll shoot some more video. Okay, got the uh, timing chain cover off. Um, it was a little tight around this bolt right here that is actually the bolt for the idler. And these lines, AC line, or I think these are steering pump lines. I did remove the bracket. It did come off, but it was super, super tight. Um, really obvious to see now the problem with this uh, with this vehicle um, and the noise it was making. Just uh, guides that are completely worn out and 
chains that have been uh, stretched. And so you can also see just the incredible amount of, uh, incredible amount of uh, sludge built up in this engine. So I suspect that tensioner, if it's hydraulically driven, which I think it is, is uh, not getting full pressure. And so this thing is just worn out. So it's time to buy a new timing chain kit and uh, get this guy back together and see if we can get this noise all taken care of. So I'll be shooting video again in a couple days. Okay, so what I've done is taken the bolt from the pulley, the crank pulley, and I used that, I screwed that into the crank here. And I have the keyway at the top and the dot at the bottom. And I have, this is hard to see, so you may need to look at some other YouTube videos in order to get a better picture of this. I'll do my best here. You can see the timing marks there. Um, they're off just a touch. I need to move it back just a little. But you can see them there uh, on the left and right spool. There's a diagonal line. Uh, on the left one, it's at about five o'clock. On the right one, it's at about eight o'clock. Um, and I have, there's a dot on the top of the intermediate sprocket that's just over a vertical. So I've got this all lined up. So when I take it apart, this is exactly how it'll go back together. And hopefully the cams are not under any spring tension. So I'm gonna go ahead and take everything down. I'll put it back up and I'll shoot some video on anything that I noticed or learned. Okay, let me show you where I am in disassembling this. So the tensioner that was on the left, I'll show it to you in just a moment, but it was held on by two tens, bolts that were right there, and then the center nut here was a 14. That all came off pretty easily. There's a gasket behind that tensioner. And then for the top, there were three tens that held the guide that runs along the top of the chain. And then the two bolts that hold on the sprockets for the camshafts, um, I believe they were 17s, and I held the crank here on this hex part of, excuse me, I held the camshafts on the hex part here with a 25 millimeter crescent wrench. So you're gonna hold those in place. You don't wanna turn those trying to get that bolt off. You hold those in place, use a breaker bar to get the bolt off, and now that top chain with its sprockets will slide off. So that's where I am. Let me shoot you a little video of what those parts look like. Again, there's the tensioner. Two bolts and one nut. There's the top guide, and there are the two bolts for the camshaft sprockets. So let me keep going. I'll shoot some more video. Okay, and everything else disassembled pretty straightforward so that the guide on the right, two 10 millimeter bolts, the tensioner on the left, two 10 millimeter bolts, the guide or the tensioner, I guess, guide on the left there was a 12 nut at the top and everything slid right off. All right, so let me just pause because I'm at the very end of disassembling the core. Everything from this point forward is putting things back together. So to give you some idea of where we're at, here is the parts that we took off to uh, get to the timing chain. Of course, also the uh, intake manifold there, or just the plenum and the timing chains, okay? So let me get some stuff together here. I do wanna measure these chains to see if they stretched any, so I'm gonna do that next. And then I'm gonna slowly start reassembling this car. Okay, so let me show you how I have this set up. Um, this is a melling kit. Um, and so again, feel free to look online. You'll need to probably look at a few videos because this, this one's gonna be in the car. It's gonna to be tough to see. Uh, on the top side, You'll notice that the dark link is on the arrow. The stripe matches a line in the block. It's actually a protrusion in the block, and I don't think I can show you that very well. It's underneath there, uh, and it's also at the uh, at the uh, what is that? The five o'clock position. Same on the uh, exhaust cam here. The dark link goes to the arrow, and the line lines up with a protrusion that is sticking out. Uh, underneath, this is super hard to show you, the light link uh, goes to the arrow that you can't see on that intermediate sprocket there. The dot goes to the dark arrow here on the intermediate sprocket. Underneath, underneath the dot goes to the copper colored link that lines up with the dot on the block, and the keyway is vertical lining up with that line. 
All right, so that's how the timing chain goes. Sorry, I couldn't give you a better view of that. But now it's just time to put back on the components. I do not have torque specs for any of this. So I'm just going to have to work my way through it by feel and um, begin reassembling it. I'll try to shoot some video along the way. Okay, next thing we got to do is get this timing chain cover cleaned up um, and also get this seal replaced. I like to use a seal puller like that to simply pry it out. I've got a new seal that I'll just uh, use a block of wood and a rubber mallet just to tap into place. Get this all cleaned up. Um, Okay, used a block of wood and tapped in the front main seal here so that it's flush all the way around and even. Got it pretty well cleaned up. I mean, it's not perfect, but for a home garage, that's as good as it's gonna get. Uh, same on this side, got most of the sludge out. There's still a few places, but that's just as good as it's gonna get. So uh, I've also removed all of the gasket material from the outside, getting ready to wipe it down with brake clean. Gonna do the same. Uh, I've already wiped down actually the brake clean on the um, the block itself where this will mate and then I'm going to use some of this ultra gray permatex okay so this is the way I prepared the timing cover gasket so I've got a bead of RTV um, all the way around the perimeter also a little bit kind of smeared flat here because I'm going to hit that stud no matter what I try to do I've also put a little bit on the uh, on the mating surface there on the engine block I've lubricated the seal here with motor oil so it should slide on and I've smeared flat everything on the bottom because it's gonna slide on the oil pan. I don't know if that's gonna seal or not. We'll do the best we can. So I'm gonna to try to as carefully as possible slide this down into the position and get it mated up here on the engine block. This is gonna to be tough. I may end up making a mess, but we're gonna see if we can get it on there. And once I get it on, we'll hand tighten the uh, bolts all the way around the perimeter, let it sit for about 45 minutes, and then tighten them, tighten them to torque spec. So let's see if I can get this guy on and we'll be well on our way. Okay, got the uh, timing chain cover back on. So the rest of the reassembly is identical to how the car came apart. Uh, I'll try to shoot some video along the way if anything is unusual, but uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this motor mount back on it so I can get the jack out from underneath it. I'll put the valve cover on next with the peripherals and then finally finish up with the serpentine belt, you know, idler, crank, that sort of thing. So I uh, almost finished. So uh, unless something happens unusual, the next video I'll shoot is this car hopefully up and running and I will wrap this video up. Okay, everything went back on the car exactly the way it came off. A couple of notes, uh, I tightened the Acorn nuts for the valve cover to 96 inch pounds. RTV went in the seam here, the seam back here, and on this side, there are a couple of half moon gaskets here, so silicone on each side of those. Um, pretty straightforward there. Um, I did say earlier in the video that this uh, pulley up here was for the power steering pump. It's the water pump. My apologies if I've made any mistakes like that along the way. I did find that accessing that from underneath the car was much easier to get the bolts back on. So that's how I got that back on. So the only thing left uh, now is just to put on the uh, breather, you know, the air filter breather at the top and connect it, connect the battery back. Um, and then I have not yet put the accessory belt on. I'm probably gonna crank it without the accessory belt because I wanna hear exactly what the engine sounds like internally. So I might crank it for you know 20 seconds or so just to make sure the timing chain is sounding good. Uh, and then we'll put the accessory belt back on, wheels back on, and this car will be back on the road. I'll shoot some footage shortly with uh, us driving down the road. All right, got my 2007 Suzuki SX4 all back together. And so let's give this uh, car a crank to see how she's running. All right, and as you can see, we are back up and going. Car sounds totally different. Timing chain is nice and smooth. Hey, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today. Hope it helps you out with your car. Hey, there's a lot more important things in life than Suzuki's and uh, timing chain. So I want to encourage you to jump over that video on how to become a Christian. Check that out. Thanks for watching and God bless.